we are back. What is is this our fifteenth? I think this is our. I think, yeah, I think it's fifteenth. Uh, it is. It is everyone's favorite episode. It is Black Jaded Wolf Uncaged. Our fifteenth one of these. I got a message this morning, and they said, "When are you going to talk to Black Jaded Wolf about the Dallas show? The Dallas show just happened. I haven't seen a lot of content about the Dallas show, so I'm like, shit." I, I got a messenger. I messaged Sharon. I said, hey, how's the Dallas show? She's like, yep, we're here. Everything you need to know about the Dallas show. I mean, Jeff Wilson's been posting about it for days. I'm just I know. She didn't say that. I said that. Uh, don't be mad at Sharon, Jeff. No, but, but I mean, she, you're, you'd be right if you said that. There's been a lot of posts from Jeff, but I didn't really see too many posts. So, I mean, you know, welcome back. I'm excited to talk to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a pretty quick trip for me. So uh, I had a family matter. It came in late. I just came in Friday, and uh, right behind me was Jeff. There so, you go. so I saw all the whole action in his booth. Uh, his son was there, so it was fun. I, See, I know he was doing the card kids. Did you did you sell him the uh, the Steph Curry? <laughs> A friend of mine. <laughs> oh, there you go. All right, that's cool. That's good. I mean, so Dallas show we've talked about before is a uh, an interesting show for you because not a buying show because there's a lot of repackers there. But it is a good show if you prep the right way to sell some of your stuff to the repackers. So yes. same kind of thing. Uh, there was a twist this week that weekend that uh, so obviously I packed some stuff for repack, but I already got it done before I even got there. So they just paid me and I ship it to them, so I don't have to uh, fly them into Dallas. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing if you have access to that. And the other one is uh. Basically, there was a good show going on in uh, Boston area, too, at that time. Okay. A lot of them came for Wednesday and then left Saturday. A lot of the repack people, two of the biggest ones, left Saturday. So a lot of people came and like, oh, we're going to sell to the repack people on Saturday. And they were gone already. Because they, they went to Boston? Yes. So the funny part is, so I could buy on Saturday because the repack people weren't there. And wow. Yeah, I mean, there was still a couple of them, but some of the bigger ones was uh, gone by that time. So I bought some. Uh, it's so hard to buy in Dallas, but um, they knew that there's less, you know, buyer. So I was able to buy at what I'm comfortable at, basically. Nice. See, so it yeah. turned into a good selling and buying show for you. Yeah. That doesn't happen that often. How about foot traffic? About the same, less, more? Uh, Foot traffic. Was a little slower, but it's still like a, a lot of last minute trying to uh, pick up football stuff because they know the next one, July, is going to be probably a 20 increase on football. So so a lot of people were hustling for uh, Trevor Lawrence and they're willing to pay like almost full value or comp on eBay for Trevor Lawrence's. All just, this stuff's expensive. I know. It, it's almost to a point that um, I wouldn't touch them, you know. Because it's 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 almost baked in, like we said, you know. His yeah, I mean, well, I, I think Vegas odds, although I'm not supposed to talk about Vegas odds. I get in trouble for doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, Vegas odds have them winning the division. Like, they're the favorite to win their division. So, you know, if that's going to happen, he's probably going to play well and put up some good numbers and stuff. Yeah. Um, he's ready. I mean, you know, um, but still, I mean, I don't like to bet on just winning the division. But, you know. I would like to bet on team that I actually that I think could have a good six game streak. You know, those are my initial bet. You know, what team has the, has a chance to go five and zero, four and zero? You know, and those are so the guys. You've they, probably already made this play because it's too late for you if you didn't. I remember last year it was Tua and uh, Hertz. Yep. Have you been stockpiling anybody? Don't tell me Desmond <laughs> Rear. Have you been no, buying no. any? Okay. I, I don't like to bet on guys that are. In the bottom, bottom of the pile. I like to be somewhere in the middle. Um, so this year, my soft schedule, the, the top three soft schedule are still not my favorite, basically. So th this is a curveball, not like last year. Because I thought Hurts, the Eagles were like one of the top defense, you know, one of the top team soft schedules. So it's like a perfect situation for Hurts. There was nobody this year that falls into that category in my in my book. And then, you know, our, our boy, uh, Jared Goff is, uh, is one, my guy that I'm buying, but the problem is he, there's two come, I think they're like two, uh, camp 
with players and he looked very rusty. Mm-hmm. He's not even guaranteed the start. So I don't know how we could read into that, but we'll see, you know. Yeah. And I mean, then you had Derek Carr, who I mentioned, but I mean, as far as, you know, it's, it's funny because uh, taking a step forward, I think, Fields is not the quarterback that hurts his, but I think he takes a step forward this year. He, you know, he can play a, a full year. He could do some video game type yep. numbers, but his cards are not cheap either. No, he's not cheap. Everybody was looking for Fields uh, in Dallas too. But my problem with Fields is I'm afraid of that type of quarterbacks. You know, um, I understand with Hurts, but he was so cheap. That's why I bought Hurts, even though he's a somewhat of a running quarterback. Yep. But Fields is a real running quarterback. Real running, yeah. And to me, I'm I, I don't know. It, it it looks a little scary. So let me ask you, right? Because this is I mean, we'll talk shows and what's coming up and a little more about Dallas, but you know this stuff better than anybody. And I think it's important, especially now with the market going up and then way back down and a lot of the air being taken out of, of you know, the, the flip game, the investor game, I'm talking about collectors, so yeah. about the invest game, you are good at this. You know what you do. And I think it's because you have sort of rules, rules that you live by. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I can't get too burned if I stick by my rules. So I guess my question for you is, if the quarterback class, because I know we're only doing quarterbacks, right? If the quarterback class mm-hmm. doesn't have that winner for you this year, it doesn't have that hurts that stands out. Is it against your own rules to look at somebody like a Lamar Jackson? Do you now go for some of the you know guys who have been here a couple more years that aren't that first couple? Like, do you only stick to like first, second, third year quarterbacks? Talk to me a little bit about that. Um, so that's one of the rules of exactly last year. You know, I don't like Kenny Pickett. I don't like last year's group. Um, and then the year before that, be- besides Trevor Lawrence playing well, you know, last few weeks, uh, him getting into the play, I didn't like that group either. You know, uh, Fields, I know was good because running. But, but not Zach Wilson and not Mac Jones and, yeah. you know, these guys. No, no Brock Purdy? I'm not afraid to basically look at, I'm actually buying Deshaun Watson, some Deshaun, because he's so cheap. Um, he also got some tools added this year. Uh, I'm buying a few Rodgers still because the hype is going to be crazy beginning of the year. And if he goes 2-0, and his stuff, you know, will, will fly. And then Lamar is one of the guys. He's dirt cheap right now. And I think with that division, obviously the Bengals there, but I don't think it's that tough of a division either. Um I will look at those three guys. Those are my three guys that I will look Lamar, at. Lamar, let's let's you know let's let's pull at this thread a little bit more. The Lamar buying is because he's cheap, so you can't really get burned too much by him because it's not going to really go down too much more. Um, and you know, even if he does, let's say he gets hurt or doesn't start well, you'll hold him until next year. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, okay, so that's one, two. The upside's potentially there, but is the upside okay? He starts off four and one, five and zero, oh, and you're moving it immediately. Is that is that the thought? No, if he could win the division, it depends on how the Bengals play. You know, you gotta you gotta uh, you're like a managing a portfolio. You gotta look mm-hmm. at every aspect again. You know, and then if he starts zero and two, his stuff is gonna drop even more. Uh, if if his NT dropped to like two thousand, I will pick up a couple. To be honest, with you'll you. buy more. Yeah, exactly. To protect your investment. Why? And let's say, let's say OBJ doesn't start, you know, he's not fully healed. Then, you know, he could win a little bit later when OBJ comes back, you know, and you don't need to base on performance too. sometimes the hype is better than performance. So, so let me ask you something. Hype on a quarterback that's already beaten down. You've seen that? Like that comes back like Lamar. So, so I guess, cause you've been here a while. I have to ask you this, right? I mean, I think the new blood is just looking for the new quarterback, right? They're, I don't even know who this year's quarterback is. I don't even know Stroud and Young, and who knows if they'll even have cards during the season that it's, are you know relevant. But you know, pick it. You know, people want the, the first year, first second year. You know. Lamar has already had a kind of a run and you know, a dip. Is it harder for those guys to actually appreciate again? Well, you have to buy low. So at that time, when he was so hot, hopefully you sold most of those. And now when he's, I'm talking about buying at low not the stuff that you bought five years ago when he was hot i'm talking Mm -hmm. about the stuff you bought recently that are you know a cheap and you could instantly double if you bought right i'm not talking about you know investment that you had five years ago that you got burned and you're holding Mm -hmm. and 
you know, and then when he gets hot a little, you need to kind of maximize and sell. Sell. Mm -hmm. See, it's important to get this out there. I know we talk about shows, the show within a show, but you are the show. Right. And and I'm going to be as honest as I can. I mean, I talked to a lot of people in the hobby and the people who came in in the last couple of years and they came in when it was easy yeah. and they got lucky and they rode a wave up, myself included on a lot of cards. I mean, a lot of selling I'm doing this year, I'm selling at a loss. Mm -hmm. Now, luckily for me, I was buying cards very cheap, selling them really high. And I'm now taking smaller losses on those. So I'm still yep. way up overall, but still. I mean, I'm not mistake proof myself, right? Some of the cards that I'm selling now, you talked about it, Tim Duncan. I sell it at a little bit of a loss. You know, there are certain cards that just, you know, they don't fit my my current, uh, you know, collecting strategy. Yeah. You don't you don't take too many losses because you stick to your rules. But more importantly, I think people they need to hear this, right? A couple things. Number one, you said manage it like you're managing a portfolio, right? You're assessing the risks. Yeah. You even just talked about dollar cost averaging. If Lamar Jackson, if you have an NT or a couple of his NTs and he goes 0-2, you're mm -hmm. going to go and buy more when they come when they come down. Now you're going to have three, four, or five of them in yeah. the hope that when he when his weapons get better or you know later in the season they improve. Now you are your your basis on the yeah. bunch of them is even lower. Your and, average cost, right? Yeah. And not on that, almost and some of them are almost free, to be honest with you, because you sold some of the good ones and you paid it all off. I mean, that's like the best case scenario. But now the important part. Mm -hmm. Listen to what's being said here. Okay. Don't fall in love with your winners. This was what we agreed on last year with Jalen Hurts, right? Yep. And and you combine that with what you just said, which is the performance doesn't always matter, right? It's the yep. hype that matters. So when yep. Jalen Hurts is nine and one, you know, or whatever the hell he was, and I'm saying sell that stuff now. It's run so much. You got to sell it, take that money off the table. The the biggest, you know, commentary that I got back from the Hurts owners the people who had his come on he's the greatest look at how awesome he is he's the greatest okay he may be the greatest you still have to sell at the right time and selling mm -hmm. at the right time is not the day after he has his second loss or after he hurts his ankle or after he gets knocked out of the playoffs it probably isn't even after he wins the super bowl it was nope. right then and there when he was nine before and one the <laughs> yeah before the super bowl exactly so i mean listen you can learn a lot from black jaded wolf the one big lesson is know when to take your chips off the table, right? It's like Kenny Rogers. You got the gambler. No one to but, hold them, no one to fold them, right? But save some, you know. Um, I, but uh, see, that's the difference. It's like people are like, oh, but Sharon didn't sell his black one of one, you know. But my black one of one is paid for. Right. People don't get that. So I sold everything to a point that I only have one or two left. And people are like, oh, you could have sold the, the black, but I would rather, you know, it's it's like a big chip right now that I'm holding that yeah. it's still have a high potential. Why, you know. But that's another card. If he rips off, a, you know, another great season here, that card's right back again, hype. And what you're saying is you're now into it for very little, if mm -hmm. anything at all, because you've made enough profit on the rest of the stuff. You don't have mm -hmm. to be all or nothing on yeah. it. Um, I'm talking to the people who bought one or two Jordan Love cards. Oh. And he starts off 2-0 and oh, or whatever it's going to be. You know what I mean? Get rid of it. I was sold it already. I did sell it already. With me building a portfolio, I also have clientele that who I sold those cards to, you know. Mm -hmm. And I always watch their back, too. And I tell them, send them a text. I mean, I know I sold you this at a fair price. I think you should consider selling them. Then it's up to them. If they don't want to sell them, that's up to them. But I told them it could be a good time to sell them. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's fair, right? Do they always listen? Uh, this one didn't. <laughs> regret? Does that person now regret it and 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 call you and say I should have listened to you? No, no, they not because they they're hoping national they could sell it. All right, listen. Yeah. But here's the thing, right? When everybody gets on to the same thing, it's buy now and sell at the national. Doesn't that make it harder to do it? You know? No, because there's so much buyers. That's the thing. Uh, there's still okay not on big 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 stuff but i'm talking about the sweet spot of like two thousand to five thousand dollars there's a lot of buyers so let's talk about that again because i believe that that is a huge transition happening in the hobby right now i think it already happened over the last year and i think it's going to be that sweet spot for the next couple of years where collectors can collect where people can invest and flip in cards still make money you buy a two to five thousand dollar card and that person rips off five wins in a row you can double your money in that card right that's what you're talking about yeah. 
But if it's a two thousand or twenty five hundred dollar RPA of a quarterback, and they don't start off hot, okay, it could go down, but it, it's going to go down a little bit. And yep. you could always hang on to that and hope that he, you know, gets some weapons or yep. you know performs better the following season. That's how you man, you know, you you manage your downside risk, but also bake in some potential upside risk. I yep. think the difficulty is that with the market going, please tell me if I'm onto something or you think I'm nuts. But the market going as crazy as it was. You know, buying Scotty Barnes RPA. Sorry, I'm bringing that up. I know you did. Buying Scotty Barnes one RPA. Loss, what? <laughs> Scotty Barnes is one of my losses. Yeah, see, I bring it up because I forget nothing. But, mm -hmm. you know, talk about Scotty Barnes RPAs at the price they were at or, you know, any of these quarterback RPAs, Zach Wilson, Mac Jones. I mean, the amount of money that they were, it was insane, right? Say hi, bud. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> this kid, I, I sent them to school today. They had, uh, you know, they, uh, they had like a color war kind of thing where every class had to wear their own kind of shirt. But of course, my son doesn't tell me about it till this morning. <laughs> and he's like, dad, I need a purple shirt. Oh. I'm like, all right, well, you don't own a purple shirt. You know, <laughs> like, and he runs into his sister's closet and he gets a sweatshirt, a purple sweatshirt that's down to his ankles. I'm like, <laughs> it's like 80 degrees, pal. And you're not wearing that to school. I know it's purple. So I took a white t-shirt and a purple marker and I wrote, this is my purple shirt. And I colored the word purple in and purple. Mm -hmm. I wore it to school. He's like, everyone loves my shirt. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so fun stuff. But I mean, so, so you can get much more hurt on those 30,000, 20,000, $15,000 cards. And it's harder to kind of double your money on that. It's harder to even make a ton of money on those, but those two to five, that seems to be the, the the sweet spot of where people are, are able to play now. Am I am I am I right? Wrong? That's what they're basically a lot of people are settling in. I mean, uh, during the the really peak, you know, a couple of years ago, the sweet spot was like around at five to fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. Sweet spot has dropped to like two to maybe five seven thousand, but those are because it will go up enough that maybe ten fifteen. That people are still comfortable basically people are just a little scared of paying 30 40 50 thousand on you know i'm not talking about the the gamblers the big you know gamblers of nt and stuff like that i do some nt but i don't really like it's not the safest of gambling basically <laughs> all right so you find a quarterback you like right now a young mm -hmm. quarterback this year let's just fast forward um what's the product you're buying if it's not nt because it's too expensive like what do, what do you look for in a quarterback uh, contend, uh, contenders basically. Contender is very safe, and then especially the crack ices and stuff like that. Those are has tremendous possibility of jumping to almost four or five times its value. You know, just regular contenders, numbered cracked ice. What? Uh, yeah, cracked ice. I'm talking about cracked ice. Yeah, everybody loves that cracked ice. Uh, tickets, ticket stub has like a jump to. Uh, but if you could PSA 10 those, it's super rare. So they jump also not as high as the cracked ice. The ticket subs are the ones that are numbered to the jersey number, right? I think. Okay. Yeah. So we're, we're not talking about defensive guys that's numbered to 80 something right. <laughs> or wide receiver. We're talking about uh, quarterbacks that's 20 and below, you know. I mean, I like it. And I mean, they're reasonable. The, you know, the prices are not as crazy as some of the other stuff. Um, um, so you can't pick like the number one guy. I mean, you know, it's like Trevor Lawrence last year. You know, it's if you bought it at peak, it's, it's so high. Now you could get his cracked ice for below 10. You know, they so were think about that for a second. If you bought Trevor Lawrence last year, all right, now part of that is the market correcting. But if you bought Trevor Lawrence last year, and all he did was go to the playoffs. Yep. And now more hype on him this year, his cards are less money. Yep. Why is that? Because everybody Always piled into the number one guy. Always the number one guy. So sometimes I don't even touch it until the following year, you know, because most of the time they get picked by a by a sucky team anyway. So what's so by the that token? Mm -hmm. Herbert has his stuff come down a lot. Has he not? Is he no longer the flavor of the of the? Of oh, the he still is, but people are also you also can't find them. You can't find good Herbert and T available uh, unless people are you know panicking. But I don't see a lot of his big investor panicking. And when something pops up like an NT, they will buy them up too. So so you seldom see them drop to a certain point. A lot what about people, other cards? What about like his cracked ice? Same thing. They're protected. Uh, they drop, but not as... They drop. They almost yeah. dropped almost 50 What's a cracked ice point. contender's ballpark? You don't have to give me, you know, you don't have to take uh, your market uh, move with that. Uh, I say 10, but I think they're like 
nine, I think, like fifteen to twenty thousand. They were at like, yeah. So still a lot. What were they at at the peak? At the peak, they were like thirty. Wow. Yeah. So they're down, but they're still pretty high. It's still I mean, high. You know, for somebody who missed the playoffs two years ago and then this year really didn't do too yeah. much. And there's, you know, I have checked the past few months, but it could have dropped to even closer to like ten. Uh, oh. Because, but I know a couple of them. They're very low pop. So you sell them, see them, and I know a couple of my customer has one or two, and they wouldn't sell it for less than. I I mean, I like Herbert and everything. I'd be scared shitless paying that kind of money for him because he 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 hasn't lived up to any of the hype, and that AFC man, the gauntlet, it's just crazy. I mean, you still have Mahomes, you have Burrow, you have. How about Josh Allen? Has his stuff come down a lot? No, that that's the funny thing about Josh Allen. I think his his stuff is still insane. Um, so I'd be scared with him too. I mean, and look, yeah. I could be wrong. Any of those guys could win the Super Bowl. Any of the guys I just named, including I, Herbert, Allen, you know, uh, Burrow, all of them, they could win the Super Bowl. They've all the been four guys close. are basically the hottest, you know. Josh Allen, it's because people think there he's going to be the next, you know. Mahomes. But think about it. People are, are falling over themselves to buy Trevor yeah. Lawrence cards, yeah. right? Kenny Pickett. But- you know, people break it. They're, oh, Kenny Pickett! I mean, what's Kenny Pickett going to do? He's also in the AFC. Lamar, right? I mean, he signs this huge contract. Got weapons. Every quarterback that we just named, they're all in the same conference. Yep. Well, it's insane. Somebody, somebody has to step up, though. So and by the way, Aiden Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. So that that could be a good thing, but you know, somebody has to step up. And I in in I would rather pick uh, Aaron Rodgers, to be honest with you. <laughs> Well, because Roger's stuff, believe it or not, even though he's already won multiple MVPs and a Super Bowl, his top cards are probably priced in line with what Herbert's cards do for, if not less. And not, yeah, low. And not on that. He's still a Hall of Famer. Right. So if you're buying him, why would you buy Pickett when you could buy him? His national treasure is probably the same price of a good Aaron Rodgers rookie autograph. You know, I would rather buy Rodgers. Because he's already a Hall of Famer. If it drops a little, it, you know, it is what it is. But I, I don't think it's – I think it's a good buy right now, Rod. Right. I think that what you're getting with um, um, – what you're getting with Rodgers, it's a different type of investment, though. Yep. It's something where the floor is kind of already baked in. You know what I mean? Where your downside is not there. But also the upside versus – like a Rodgers card is probably not going to double. It's already gone up. It's already it's already where it is. You know what he's going to do. The reason why a Hertz could it's double, double. Eh, he's not winning multiple Super Bowls. I mean, he might win one, and even if he wins one, I don't think it doubles. The reason why the younger guys double is because they could win one this year, and people are also now baking it. He could win four more, you know? He's so low, though, it could double. All right. Well, think about that, though. All right. So the flip side to that is mm-hmm. every one of the guys we just named, their cards are, are more than Aaron Rodgers. Yes. From Herbert to Burrow to Mahomes to, I mean, Trevor Lawrence's cards are probably more. Every one of them. Are yeah. any of them going to do what Rodgers did? Any of them? Yeah, but the prospecting market don't care about that. <laughs> That's the difference, right? But the prospecting market, you got to get in, you got to get out. You got to yep. find the gold and then sell the gold. You don't find the gold, put the gold in your closet and hold on to exactly. it forever. Yep. So it's uh, either sell, you flip right now, or you hold. If you got it at a good, 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 good price, I will hold, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, or you buy a couple of them, right? You buy three or four of the guy you like, and if you're right, you pick the right one, you sell two or three and hold one, you know? So, I mean, that's – that. I I love your strategy on that. Um, Overall, I love talking to you because, I mean, a lot of people message me, I'm selling, oh, you know, I'm I'm out of the hobby. This person left. We got a lot of, you know, a lot of news stuff came out right before we recorded this, you know, alt – had you know there were some people from all posting that they had some you know some layoffs over there we obviously know what happened with pwcc i mean yeah. I, I, there's the, nobody's safe from it right and you just see it the thing is you were here before right so you were here before the run up are we kind of seeing a new normal or are we still kind of in a craziness you know what i mean like are we back to where it was before the run up it's it's still evolving uh with the fanatics instability still there you know uh, it's like there's some change. I think uh, there's a couple of big names that's people from PWCC that just went to alt. Uh, you know, 
uh, big names, uh, big trying people. to get them on the show to say hi and you know talk to me about the move. But you know <laughs> it's tough to schedule with those guys. They, yeah, you know, they're they're hot commodities now. Uh, there's yeah, well, it's also certain stuff that they can't talk about. So I think that's that's the reason why. You know, I I saw them. You know, when it was announced, uh, I saw them in Dallas. It was a week before, like when it happened. So there's a lot of things going on. But let let's if you could make some money now, you know, make some money now. Cause, but I think. I think we're in good hands because a lot of people, there's just so much people in Dallas that you know that are buyer flippers. It's a mix of stuff. So if you know how to sell, how to maximize your profit, this is still a great industry to get into. So there you go. And the book of how to maximize your profit and how to sell by Black Creative Wolf is going to be in stores <laughs> soon enough. Uh, look for it on Amazon. Uh, because I don't know, I'm gonna have to buy it because I don't get it. But you guys get some tidbits here, right? The thing is, you're very disciplined. Like me, there's a golden auction ending tonight, and I want to buy like half the auction. Why? I don't really need any of it. I don't buy it all because it's cool. Look, see, that's the problem. <laughs> I, I don't even look, so you know, it's a. Uh, well, that's important, want- right? You're not looking because you right now you probably have a little piece of paper where these are the cards I'm looking for. I'm looking for these people, these cards. I'm looking for this card. I'm looking for Lamar Jackson, cracked ice, contenders, autos, or national treasures at this price or less with a decent patch. I'm looking for these guys. And you'll find them at shows. You're out there in person, or, or you, maybe you post about it, and you, you know somebody in your network knows and sells it to you or finds one for you. Mm-hmm. If not, oh, let me look in the golden auction and see what's there tonight. Or let me look at PWCC and just, okay, I got some money to spend. Let me throw it around. Instead, yeah. you stick to your guns. You buy what you want to buy because you've targeted that like a portfolio manager. It's like, all right, this is the one. This is the one that my research says the downside is limited. The upside is there, right? Good to make a note. But also the good thing about having doing a show is you don't know what falls <clears throat> It, it doesn't always it's not always the things that you you think you're gonna find and you know sometimes you just gotta follow your guts like if you oh you, you haven't seen this piece in like 10 years you can't find a search on it follow your gut and buy it it's by the not- way one of the things you get the advantage of at the show when something falls in your lap you're buying it and it's not broadcast to the world yep exactly. you might find a bargain in the golden auction tonight or pwcc this weekend and you go to sell it next week, even though you know as a dealer this car hasn't come up forever, and you got a steal on it because it you know it fell through the cracks. The person you try to sell it to next week, they're gonna know what you paid. Yep. So it's That's it's the reason why I, I don't do it because first I always sell below comp. How am I gonna do that when it's you know, or worst case scenario, it's a comp because people will just throw you the comp value. Yeah, here's and- your comp. Yeah. It's funny. Andrew used to do that all the time. He used to buy cards and be like, this card is so cheap. I got it a steal. You know, it was, it was listed in eBay on like a Tuesday at, at three o'clock in the afternoon. And I got a steal on it. It was half what the last one sold for. And then he'd take it to the show to sell it. And they'd be like, well, look at the last eBay company. Yeah. He's like, I know that's mine. I got a good deal. And they're like, well, we need, we'll pay you 70% of that. And You know, so it's an important lesson. You know, it's one of those things that it depends what you're doing this for, right? There's no problem buying in an auction or on eBay if it's a card you want for your collection and you want to hang on to, right? Because then the comp is irrelevant. And if you're planning on holding it for a long enough time and then trying to sell it or just hold it because it's something you want, the comp doesn't matter. Where you buy it doesn't matter. But if you're trying to flip, yep. you're trying to buy something and then sell it, yep. can't have that trail. Can't have that comp. Comp's a dirty word. I mean, it's like I sold a big piece in Dallas. It, it's like a $2,500 card. But uh, everybody, so, so for some reason, one guy listed it on eBay, $1,500, right? And it got sold right away. Mm-hmm. And literally everybody that came to my table and showed me, oh, there was a comp for $1,500. And one person, I knew he was going to say that. I just told him, one, there was a comp for fifteen. dollars I'm not going to fall for that comp. And you know what? The last comp was twenty five, dollars and the comp before that was 25 and the last comp was 15. I told this guy, I'll do 2,200. And wow. 200. Because yeah, because he's the one who sold it to himself for 15 from one eBay account to the other. <laughs> That's true. He knew he was going to find you at the show and get it from you for 2,200. That's true. See? <laughs> yep. So, That's see, the way it works. So it depends if you fall for it or not. If there's a guy that has a 1,500 and you he, he sells it for 15, 
great. You know, I'm not going to sell it for 15. <laughs> well, you know your price and you know what your stuff's worth. So give me 30 seconds. What's the next show? What are you going to next? Uh, I might do a couple of like local shows. Mm -hmm. There's a New York show and Jersey. Um, I think the next big one is not till Chantilly. Okay. Um, yeah, it's in June, right? End of June. Yeah. Summer is usually the, a little slow. So we'll see. But um, I might go out there just to uh, buy, basically, instead of uh, setting up during the oh. summer. Well, there you go, guys. Another episode of Black Jaded Wolf Uncaged. I, I've said it almost every time. I've done hundreds of episodes. Now more than a 1,000 episodes when you count everything. I learn more from you. And also, mm -hmm. I, I, I think I'm going to speak for the folks who listen to this. I'm going to say thank you because I come into you know my episodes, You know, there's a lot of negativity. Right. For a bunch of reasons. And some of it I bring upon myself. I'm selling cards for a loss. You know, the mistakes that I made, you know, blah, blah, blah. and I feel like, oh, wow, look at all these negative stuff in the hobby. Look at all the gotcha news. Look at all this other stuff. You know, people are going after each other. It's, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's supposed to be an escape. But I come on, I talk to you. You're having fun and you're making money. You're always smiling. Uh, uh, I can I add something that I forgot? Yeah. I spoke to someone named Donald in the Dallas show. And he's like, he was literally talking to me for like maybe half an hour. Did he like, did oh. did he pronounce China? China? Was it that Donald? Did you see that Donald in Texas? Oh, I'm not sure who that is. He's a tall guy and China. He's tall, <laughs> he has a like crazy hair. He's no, orange. No. He ran for president and lost last time around. <laughs> that Donald? Different Donald. <laughs> okay, different he's not Donald. orange. No, I'm just kidding. No, so he was telling me, can you tell people how to buy or sell at a show? I'm like, why? Because he said he's having trouble people telling him like, oh, when he tells people I buy at 70%, 60%, they, they get upset, you know. And so I told him and as a dealer, he said, can you explain to people that we have fees too, even though we don't have eBay fees, but we have table fees, we have taxes, we have to pay actually. Yeah. Yeah, the cost of getting to the show, bringing your cards, shipping That's stuff, you name exactly. paying for staff to go so, and be at the tables where you can go to the bathroom. Yeah. So I told him, I try to be very positive in the show. So if I bring that up, it might sound like I'm just complaining. You know? <laughs> so I told True. him and he said, uh, but it's good to tell people so they know how to sell. So I brought that up. But basically... You know, we the as dealers, we do have a lot of expenses. It's not just eBay fees, you know. So, so these are. Well, I mean, think about why the point that that, that that Donald is making is that people come up to the table and say, "All right, automatically, I should be paying you know ten percent less than what you would be charging me on eBay because you don't have the twelve percent eBay PayPal fees and all that other stuff." Yeah. Okay, there are other costs involved. Yes. And yeah, we'll work with you. We get it, right? It's a cash transaction. It's the whole deal. I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of positives to selling in a show, but that doesn't necessarily mean, okay, but I would be bad at it because anytime someone was like, that's the comp, that, that your $2,500 car where people like $1,500, bucks, i would be like, go buy it for $1,500. Exactly. <laughs> and now, go ahead. They buy it on eBay. They have to pay taxes and, and shipping too. Yeah, and go. Pay. If that's the comp, that's a, go find it. Then why exactly. are you here? If yeah, you could get it for fifteen hundred, go get it for fifteen hundred. You cannot set up on the show. <laughs> no, I can't set up on the show. I'd be like, I'd be bad. Uh, I'd be like throwing yeah. stuff. You Freebies. See? Why don't you bring me free stuff? I'd be the worst. <laughs> and so basically, that's I don't say it because I don't want to sound like I'm I'm complaining. But you know, I told it, it is a problem. But you know, because there are kids now who come like, oh, it sells for ten dollars. I want ten dollars. Yeah. I said, I can give you $10. <laughs> yeah, how am I supposed to do that? See how this works? I have to make money. Oh, but I want to make the money. All right. I'll flip you for it. So, yeah, you know, that's one of that I spoke to, uh, I, we talked about it with Donald. You know, this is the closest we could uh, entertain the topic. But <laughs> I mean, it works. Listen, Donald sounds like a nice guy. You also ran into someone named Joseph and uh, Hillary. <laughs> And there were just a whole, a whole bunch of, you know, interesting people in Dallas. Dallas sounds like a great show. Listen, this has been fun. I love chatting with you. We'll do this again in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And uh, maybe I'll see you at whatever the New York, New Jersey show you're talking about. That would be yeah. fun. You got to yeah. let me know about the details. All right? Yep. Have a good summer. Thanks, everybody.